The following program contains dramatizations of real people and events. Some names and identifying details may have been changed. You're having a baby. How can a woman go into labor without even knowing that she's pregnant? I never felt her kick. I didn't have a belly. One woman will be told that her baby bump is a tumor. Doing something hard right here. Cancer. Another woman will mistake labor for constipation. When I looked down, something was still attached. Honey? These are the real stories of women who didn't know they were pregnant. In January 2008, 20-year-old Abigail is a full-time college student living with her boyfriend, Ethan. Hey, baby. We had talked about kids, but after we got married... We were actually talking marriage. Abby and Ethan just clicked as soon as they met each other. I love you. I love you, too. Bye. Bye. <coughs> In January, Abigail takes an antibiotic for a sinus infection, but doesn't use a backup method of birth control. In February, she misses her period. What's your passion? Your favorite. <laughs> but her period resumes in the middle of the following month, and again two weeks later. March made up for what I missed in February, and from there on out, I had bleeding every month. In April, Abigail develops an adverse reaction to dairy products. Certain foods, mostly things that had milk in them, Hey, can we get a check on camera three? That July, she gains three pounds after she starts a night shift as a surveillance agent. Copy that, 10-4. She also notices that her feet are swollen. She started putting a little weight on. I figured it was my job change. I sit at a desk for eight hours, and it was just about all the sugar and caffeine I could get. Happy Halloween. A few weeks later, on Halloween night, Abigail feels a pain in her abdomen that she believes is constipation. It was more or less like a twinge. It didn't last very long. Probably just the ribs I ate. Probably. <laughs> By 10 p.m., what she thinks is constipation is now causing extreme pain. It went from being like a twinge to almost like a severe pinch. And they were lasting a little bit longer, coming in waves. <sighs> <sighs> I really thought I had to go to the bathroom. <sighs> she sat on the toilet, probably about 30, 35 minutes, and nothing happened. I was very quiet. <sighs> it was about quarter to 11, and I finally decided I had had enough. So I, I just sat down on the toilet, I grabbed the door handle and the sink, and just with everything I had, just pushed. Ah! Honey? And I was sitting and sitting on the toilet, trying, 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 and it just was not happening. And I heard a pop. As soon as I heard that pop, I felt better. I was like, oh, thank God. Honey? Well, I just felt almost normal again. Felt like I had went to the bathroom. I was gonna go to bed. Abigail thinks she's finally relieved of her extreme constipation. But this Halloween night will take a bizarre twist when she finds herself attached to the toilet. On Halloween night, 2008, 21-year-old Abigail and her boyfriend, Ethan, are spending the evening at home when she gets hit with excruciating cramps. It just honestly felt like the worst constipation I had ever felt in my life. She sits on the toilet, straining to have a bowel movement. I grabbed the door handle and it just pushed. There was a pop and then the second push, I heard a clunk. To me, it felt like I was going to the bathroom. Abigail finally feels relief. After I was done and I stood up, I turned to flush the toilet. And as I was turning, that's when I noticed I was <sighs> attached. And I looked down and I realized it wasn't what I thought it was. <sighs> I looked down and I saw the baby sitting in the toilet. And I started to panic. With no pain medication or assistance, Abigail has just vaginally delivered a baby girl without even knowing she was pregnant. It had dawned on me that the clunk and the splash that I had heard was her hitting 
the toilet bowl. I didn't know if maybe the hit in the toilet had, had killed her. She didn't move. She was lifeless. Her eyes weren't open. She made no sounds. I never heard her scream at all. I never heard her cry. Then, Abigail does something not recommended by doctors. And I got in the shower and I turned the hot water on so it would heat the room. Just keep thinking to myself, did my drinking affect her? Is she full term? Everything I had done over the last nine months came flooding back into my head. And I was, I was scared that what kind of brain damage would it have caused? She started making a little noise which progressed into a cry. <laughs> a newborn cry. She screamed. Abby? I opened the bathroom door and I saw... Abby sitting there naked on the floor holding a baby with the umbilical cord still attached to her. He said I didn't know. Uh, I'm gonna call 911. Need somebody over here quick, please. It is my girlfriend. She just had a baby. EMTs arrive quickly to cut the umbilical cord and rush the family to the hospital. Ethan calls her parents with the shocking news. She had a baby. Abby did what? They took the baby right away. If a woman doesn't receive prenatal care, some very severe consequences could occur. Just get down here, please. We need you. They're coming. You heard her cry, so <laughs> that's a so good thing. The doctors are also worried about the baby being born in a toilet. It's not a sterile environment at all, and they could develop some sort of really horrible, overwhelming infection. I was worried that, did she have brain damage? Did she have any kind of disabilities? There was a million things running through my head. I'm kind of expecting the baby's not going to make it. There's a reason you go for prenatal care. So I was afraid. What did I do to her? I couldn't live with myself. And if she didn't make it, having it had been my fault. Miraculously, the seven pound, one ounce baby appears to be perfectly healthy and close to full term. Well, the nurse told me that the preliminary tests were all good. It was a combination of joy and relief and thankfulness. Welcome home. Hey, baby. Here, let's get her inside. Okay. She was a good sized baby. Nothing that I would have ever expected because in no way, shape, or form did she look pregnant. How are you doing, Olivia? So how could Abigail not know she was pregnant and then mistake delivering a baby for a bowel movement? I haven't had any children before. To me, it felt like I was going to the bathroom. Mama had no idea you were in her stomach. If someone told me that a lady had a kid in the toilet, I would tell them that they're lying to me. <coughs> she most likely got pregnant in January after antibiotics may have rendered her birth control pills ineffective. There are questions about whether antibiotics affect birth control efficacy. And so we do advise women to use a backup method like a condom during the time that they're taking the antibiotic. Since Abigail thinks she only missed one period, she didn't recognize her digestive problems or symptoms of pregnancy. All of a sudden, milk smelled terrible. In the last few months, my feet were getting a little swollen. After Olivia's traumatic birth, Abigail and Ethan don't want to take any more chances on her future. Found a, a parenting class which helped answer some of our questions. Today, baby Olivia is a healthy six-month-old. She's active and she's hitting all her milestones. Olivia's cheerful. She's happy all the time. It was something I needed in my life, but it was my time. Still to come. My doctor said it's a tumor. I thought, this is it. I've got cancer. True or false, it's dangerous to eat any kind of fish during pregnancy. The answer when we return. It's dangerous to eat any kind of fish during pregnancy. The answer, false. Doctors recommend consuming no more than 12 ounces of some fish per week but it can be harmful to consume others that have high mercury levels, like swordfish and king mackerel.
In 1999, undergoing surgery for ovarian cysts, 26-year-old Angel is diagnosed with endometriosis. Endometriosis is a disease where the glands that line the uterus get outside of the uterus and actually implant in the pelvis. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I was experiencing um, the heavy bleeding and extreme pain. Endometriosis affects fertility that can cause adhesions and scar tissue in the pelvis. It can also affect egg quality. And we were pretty much told the chance of her conceiving was slim to none. It is devastating to hear someone tell you can't have children. Honey? But Angel manages to beat the odds. Honey? She gets pregnant in 2003. We're pregnant. <laughs> we're pregnant! Are you sure? Yes, honey, look! <laughs> I'm oh, it's just a miracle. I was ecstatic. I was overwhelmed. She's not going to believe it. Throughout her pregnancy, Angel is diligent about prenatal care. All my prenatal vitamins. I gave up caffeine. I tried to eat as much fresh food as I could. Yeah, really? <laughs> she was sick a lot. I'll be back, Mama. Oh, dear, here we go again. I threw up every day. She gained quite a bit of weight, 70 pounds. Thank you for making me a grandma. Unfortunately, Angel develops dangerously high blood pressure and has to undergo an emergency C-section. Hunter was six weeks premature. Both of his lungs collapsed. It's a 50-50 chance of him surviving. It was just devastating. Hunter would spend two weeks in the NICU fighting for his life before he is finally strong enough to go home. I did not want any more children. I cannot go through what I went through with Hunter. While Hunter recovers, Angel's health declines. Just a year later, in 2004, her endometriosis returns with a vengeance. <sighs> All the symptoms came back, the pain, the heavy bleeding. It was so painful, it felt like knives in my stomach. She would cry because she'd be in so much pain. <laughs> She would struggle with her endometriosis for the next four years. Sure you want to do this? In February of 2008, Angel gives up all hope of having more children and schedules a hysterectomy for that October. If a woman has a hysterectomy, which is removal of her uterus, along with removal of her ovaries, the endometriosis should not recur. I didn't want any more children, and it would stop all my pain. In the meantime, I'm going to start you on some hormone therapy. While she waits the 10 months for the operation, Angel continues taking birth control pills and is also put on a hormone medication. That medication actually shuts down hormones that allow the ovary to produce an egg every month. Then you're not having a menstrual cycle. I was very relieved that they could help me with treatment. Doesn't my wife look good? <laughs> she sure does. Well, thank you, baby. Angel is now no longer experiencing as much pain from the endometriosis, but there are some side effects from her medication. Angel had a lot of fatigue. I did have vomiting. Eat a sandwich yet? After 10 months of waiting, Angel is scheduled for her hysterectomy. I was so thrilled that I finally made it. On the morning of October 14, 2008, Angel undergoes her final pre-op exam and receives stunning news. Going something hard right here. And my doctor said, oh my, it's the tumor. And I cried because I thought, this is it. I've got cancer. Let's wait till we see the ultrasound. The young mother fears the worst, but the final diagnosis will be far more shocking than either Angel or her doctors could ever imagine. <laughs> Just days before her scheduled hysterectomy to treat her endometriosis, 33-year-old Angel has just received frightening news. The doctor has discovered what he thinks is a tumor in her abdomen. Doctor, I don't want to die. I thought it's cancer. I was going to die. That afternoon, a terrified Angel goes in for the ultrasound to confirm the diagnosis. Cancer running her family. You said you're scheduled for a hysterectomy on Monday? Yeah. I don't think that's going to happen. You're about four weeks away from having a baby. 
In a stunning turn of events, Angel learns that what her doctor thought might be a cancerous tumor was in fact a baby. She is at least 36 weeks pregnant and didn't even know it. Wait, is there a heartbeat? I thought there is no way that there's a heartbeat. There we go. She's so strong. <laughs> Unfortunately, Angel's relief quickly turns to fear. Her lack of prenatal care, in combination with her endometriosis medications, may have harmed the baby. Taking medication to decrease the symptoms of endometriosis can be very dangerous in pregnancy. She can have a baby that's born with problems with spine development and also lead to mental retardation. I was just hoping and praying that my baby was okay. Angel then undergoes a series of tests to assess the health of the baby. The results are chilling. Can you freeze that? All right, I'm not seeing any amniotic fluid. There's no fluid around the baby. Angel is stunned. She didn't even know that she was pregnant, and now her surprise baby is in jeopardy. Amniotic fluid is essential for your baby's nourishment. Right now, your baby's getting none. He said, we're going to have to deliver right now. They had to do an emergency C-section. I was real concerned about that. There's a lot of things can go wrong at this point. We'll be okay. Angel is rushed into surgery. I was nervous about being awake while someone is cutting on you. How are you feeling, Angel? Okay. It seemed like a long time, but it was just seconds. I asked my doctor, is there only one? Because I was in such shock that I thought maybe there could be two or three. Congratulations. And less than 30 minutes later, a six pound, seven ounce girl is delivered by cesarean. My worst fear was that there would be something wrong. I just went in shock. I just didn't know what to think. Estimated to be born at 38 weeks, Hannah Noel appears to be healthy in spite of her lack of prenatal care. She had no complications at birth, but they didn't know if there was going to be any disabilities. This is beautiful. Four months later, Angel and Tim's worst fears come true. Hannah has developed disturbing symptoms. She wasn't reaching for anything. Her muscles were extremely stiff. Hannah's lack of prenatal care could have caused a debilitating condition. Her baby might have cerebral palsy. It's one of the most common causes of lasting disability in children. In the worst case, she would have to be in a wheelchair because they have no control over their muscles. Hannah undergoes a CAT scan to help verify the diagnosis. Cerebral palsy is a group of problems that affect body movements. The test can detect damage to the motor control centers of the developing brain. And we we had to wait about a week, which is the longest week of my life. The causes of cerebral palsy is lack of prenatal care. I wish I could have had the prenatal vitamins and everything. I blamed myself. It's going to be OK. No sleep, just constantly worry. And then we get a telephone call. My stomach dropped. Are you sure? Thank you so much. Thank you. OK, goodbye. She's fine. She's good. And they were like, your child is in perfect health. At that point, I start hooting and hollering. I look at my wife, she starts crying. Within months, Hannah loses the stiffness in her limbs and motor skills develop normally. The signs of the cerebral palsy are gone. Angel is overjoyed that the little girl she didn't even know she was carrying is now healthy and thriving. She's good. She's good. She's She's good, buddy. The show, it's about... Ironically, Angel had seen an episode of I Didn't Know I Was Pregnant just a few weeks before Hannah's birth. Mama, seriously. I had seen TLC. There's a program on there, and those women are pregnant don't know it. It has to be made up. You're going to have a baby. I just looked at her, and I said, that's just not possible. How could anybody be so stupid to, to not know they're pregnant? Look, she's not a stupid baby. Two weeks later, Angel experienced it for herself. So how could she not know that she was pregnant? I never felt her kick. I didn't have a belly. I was losing weight. 
Angel most likely conceived in March of 2008, while she was on birth control pills to treat her endometriosis. My doctor told me sometimes birth control pills don't work. Sometimes people miss a pill. Her endometriosis was a big factor in why Angel didn't detect the pregnancy. It's possible that women could have symptoms of pregnancy that could mimic some of the symptoms of endometriosis. My doctor didn't even know I was pregnant. You're looking good. Six months later, Hannah shows no signs of her unusual beginnings. Hannah is wonderful. She's healthy. Angel is still planning on having a hysterectomy, but is currently in good health. My health is wonderful. I have lost 40 pounds, and I feel better than I ever have right now. My life's complete. I got the family I always wanted, so I'm looking forward to the future, and I think it's going to be a great one.